What's up everybody, Isaac here, Civil Engineering Academy. Today we're gonna to talk about, in this quick tip video, how your exams are scored for your PE exam and what is a passing score. So if that is of interest to you, stick around and uh, let's talk about it. All right, so if you're still with me, I appreciate you being here. Today we're gonna to talk about pass rates, how the exam is scored and what a passing score is on the Civil PE exam. And in order to do that, we really should need to go check out what the NCES puts out for their exam guide. And it will walk you through exactly how they score these exams because it is kind of a complicated process. And I can tell you some other information from recent test takers. So let's flip this around and get right to it. All right, once you get the guide open, you can start diving into actually, you know, what a CBT exam is all about and how they actually score this stuff. So if we dive down to actually page 13 is where I'm headed, you'll find that uh, you'll you'll discover how they actually do the scoring. So your exam results are based on what they say on the total number of correct answers that you selected. There's no deductions for wrong answers. So make sure that you get an answer on every single thing. Now the score is then to convert it to some skilled score and it does adjust for minor differences in difficulty across the exam formats because everyone's exam can be different. So the scaled score represents an examinee's ability level and is compared to the minimum ability level for that exam. So if you get a diagnostic that usually shows where your score is in relation to those that passed. So this, of course, has been determined by subject matter experts through dun 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 psychometric statistical methods. Now you're wondering what in the world are those? So psychometric stati statistical methods, say that five times fast. There's a ton of psychological characteristics that go into different tests. Um, you know, are you going to grade a 20 year old in college the same as a 60 year old out of school forever, you know, is that going to be the same thing? Uh, or you could dumb it down and say, you know, a seventh grader, uh, they're going to have the same test scores as someone that's 25 and just out of college. And of course, they're not. So those are some psychometric things that they consider. And some of those things that they consider are uh, aptitude testing questions, you know, where students may not be comfortable with all the answers, but you know there's one correct answer and maybe there's a time crunch to get the right answer. There could be numerical reasoning type questions and this, you know, these test your mathematical abilities, but they also test your ability to use data as a tool to solve the problems. So in other words, you know, are you good at filtering data out and finding the pattern that's needed here? The other ones could include mechanical and logical reasoning questions. So there's just a lot of different psychometric statistics. There is a wonderful YouTube channel if you ever wanted to go check it out. All right, there is a great YouTube video about the introduction to psychometric statistics, and you can dive into how these are used in the testing environment. But the gist of it is, is if you're going through this guide and you read that, just know that they're using a variety of psychometric statistics to grade these things. And because of that, it's really hard for them to just say, here's a passing score on this. So what they say is that the NCES does not publish a passing score because it vary, uh, it varies slightly based on the difficulty of the exam that you get. So the score of each one is uh, it's not a predetermined percentage, okay, that pass or fell. So they're all scored the same way, and first-time takers and repeat takers are graded to the same standard. So you're going to have a different exam than your neighbor. Some might be more difficult. Some might be less difficult. They're going to take all that into consideration. They're going to look at the psychometrics that are involved, like I said, include aptitude testing, numerical uh, reasoning, mechanical and logical reasoning questions like pattern recognitions or logical rules, uh, maybe ethics. And there's also another one called inductive reasoning questions. 
uh, in which all the answers are correct, but you have to choose the most correct. I hate those ones, by the way. Uh, so you got to choose the most correct one. So, you know, all of this is to say, you know, they have a complicated way of uh, doing this. We are very used to a bell curve type situation, and this is not a bell curve situation. They're taking into account a lot of other things to score these exams. So it's not as easy as me just telling you, hey, uh, you just need to get 70% on the exam and you'll be able to, to ace this, this test. Uh, that's not true. I would be willing to bet that you probably need to get, um, you know, 65% to 70% correct because it depends on the test that you have. And maybe that equates to something like somewhere between 52 to, you know, 58 questions correct out of 80. So that's just the truth of it. I wanted to show you this guide. I wanted to talk about those psychometric statistical methods and uh, really what you need to aim for to get a passing score. If this was me personally, I would still aim for a 70% on my practice exams because I know that no matter which exam they throw at me, if it's more difficult or less difficult, at least I know about the ballpark that I should be in anyway. So uh, that's a lot of complicated uh, talk to, to get an answer like that, but that is what I'm getting at. Some other things I wanted to show you is pass rates real quick. So on the very, uh, the most recent pass rates for the PE exam, you can see this again on the NCES website. But if you go dive into the PE exams, which is the ones I care about, uh, you can see all the number of test takers and you can see, uh, you know, their pass rates for first time takers. So the last time this was, this was done, let's go look at this. So, uh, blah, 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 blah. So again, these are tested each quarter. This is updated in July and January, respectively. Okay. And so the most recent ones that they have listed and published, you can see that construction and geotech had the lowest for first time takers and then structural and then transportation and water resources are pretty close. As a repeat taker, you're going to dive into here and you'll see that pass rates for construction is 45%, geotech was 26%, which is really low, structural is 26%, which is low as well, and then you dive into trans transportation at 55% and water resources at 56%. So historically, I'm gonna say that uh, if you went and passed results, water resources is typically the highest pass rate for first time and repeat. You can see that it's very close to transportation. They kind of just swap positions a little bit, but um, there you go for pass rate. So. Just keep that in mind as you're uh, thinking about these exams. All right, as you can see, uh, there's, it's a complicated process on how the NCES grades and scores the uh, exam that you take. And uh, if you end up failing it and you get a diagnostic, sometimes those are a challenge to interpret and in knowing what exactly your score is or what you missed the exam by. Uh, there are some states that do produce scores, actual scores that tell you where uh, you fell in line, and I believe one of those is Texas. So if you have an interest in taking it there, you can indeed get a score. But for the most part, you just get a diagnostic and you have to interpret that as to what where the passing score is and where you fell in line with that. Um, but in general, it's a very difficult process on how they score these things. And if you're looking for a specific percentage, historically, it's been around a 70% that you're gonna wanna aim for on your exams for taking practice exams in order to ace this exam. It could be a little bit less than that um, as well, but in general, shoot for around 70%. I think you'll get there for sure. And if you do need help, definitely come check us out. We've built an amazing course for you, the Ultimate Civil PE Review Course. You can check it out at civilpereviewcourse.com or you can find it at civilengineeringacademy.com. We also have exams there as well. So we're here to help you every step of the way on this journey to become a professional engineer. If you have any other questions about the PE exam, shoot me a comment below. We'll make sure we get to it in another quick tip video, but I wanted to run through what a passing score is and how they grade these things so that you are fully aware when you get into uh, this arena and preparing to pass this exam. So anyway, thanks for joining me. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.